Welcome to our series for back pain relief. We're going to be showing you techniques that are good for anyone, professional or amateur. Maybe you're someone who just wants to work on a loved one at home. We're also going to be showing you some self-massage, stretching and mobilization techniques you can use to work on yourself without a partner. You can watch the full series on Amazon. There's a link at the top of the description. We encourage you to follow us on social media so we can provide you with more information. On this specific video, we're focusing on upper back pain relief and massage techniques for upper back and neck pain. Thank you so much for following us. In our series for upper and lower back pain, we're moving into the upper back and addressing structures that cause a lot of pain around the shoulder blades especially up into this junction between the neck and the shoulder blade. The information that we go over is great for those of you at home who just want to learn to give a simple massage for friends and family. Some of the techniques are advanced enough that massage therapists can learn from these as well. I'm just gently moving Karina's shoulder blade around. I'm gonna hook underneath her shoulder here so I can lift. You can see the shoulder blade movement. I'm gonna lean in. So I'm pressing with my left thumb and then lifting the shoulder blade. A lot of people have rolled forward shoulder blades because the muscles in the chest are pulling the shoulder blades forward. What I'm doing is lengthening those muscles and then pressing along the spine. If I can get a good slide here, I can mobilize the shoulder blade and press through the paraspinal muscles all the way along. A state of ooh has been declared. Right through there. And again, lifting the shoulder blade. If I get a good position for me body-wise, Karina's shoulder blade lifts up enough that I can get under this vertebral, along the spine, vertebra, border. I'm gonna grab onto the shoulder blade and pull gently. Mobilize. It's like a lengthen and traction and place her back down. Lengthen traction, push her back down. Then fingers will work right along paraspinal muscles. We've opened up this section along the shoulder blade and the spine. I think she's having a little tension here through her rotator cuff as well, primarily through a muscle called infraspinatus. Infra means below, so infrared is below the red on the spectrum. Infraspinatus is below the spine, infraspinatus, below the spine of the scapula. So right on the shoulder blade, right here, I'm gonna place a fist I'm going to gently jostle right through here. This is going to help open up her upper back as well because I'm moving the shoulder blade around. 
people in upper back pain often are having some challenges through this area as well as a secondary consideration. I'm also able, as you can see, to jostle most of her back just by working here through the shoulder blade. And slowly I will switch sides. Just like before, hooking underneath the shoulder blade. If I don't like that arm position, we can try by the side. I think I get a little more movement here. And again, right along the paraspinals. You can grab and slide jostle as I go. You can always let the receiver know if it's ever too much pressure, Karina. Just let me know verbally. Grabbing that junction along the upper back, all fleshy, right here. Got a good grip, just jostling a little back and forth. And repeating what we did on the opposite side, I'm gonna hook right around the shoulder blade, right along that vertebral border. Mobilize, pull, lengthen. This is opening the chest, opening the shoulder blades, lengthening the rhomboids, which are muscles between the spine and the shoulder blade right here, lengthens those guys. Can cross fiber friction. Ooh, a little tension right there. Gonna hook in and lean. across the muscle fibers, a whole host of muscles right along the spine, layer after layer. Just working these back and forth, getting them to soften. And again, right into that spot on the shoulder blade, right here, infraspinatus. Hooking in with a flat fist, back and forth, a little jostle. Upper back pain and lower back pain often go together. If I get lower back pain to subside, people often find they're having a little bit of upper back pain. We tend to just listen to what our bodies tell us when it's screaming, which means that our low back will scream and we don't really hear our upper back so much. Side to side, big, broad palm press. In addition to pressing on skin and muscle here, I'm able to get small movement from side to side, vertebra to vertebra, get those small muscles to unwind as I work my way 
down the spine. And I can work my way back up again. spinatus again. I'm on top of the shoulder blades. I'm hooking on both sides and allowing my hand, hands to spread out lateral away from the spine, sliding across. You can turn the palms slightly if that feels better. Now I'm hooking and the force is going down. I'm still a long infraspinatus, but it's also moving the shoulder blades, accessing tissue in the upper back. Long, slow slide. You'll notice that we've not used any cream or lubricants. This allows me to get good, deep, traction. I can stack my body weight and slowly slide down. Sliding down again. Returning back to this junction at the upper back, I'm going to lower my body position so I can hook my forearm right into this junction. This is fleshy between the shoulder blade and the neck right here. So I'm gonna squat down and I'm gonna lean in right here. You could also do this seated in a chair. I can change position ever so slightly. You can see that I'm starting to lift with my forearm. There we go, big, broad. There is a muscle called levator scapula. Massage therapists often jokingly call it Darth levator because everybody seems to have problems with it. It attaches at the top of the shoulder blade and goes all the way up to the base of the skull. This is grabbing that insertion and then leaning in. Give a little jostle.
she's giving me some good breathing right there because she's letting go. I'm gonna give her a little bit more length, leaning in too much there, Karina. Just a little bit, if I back off right there is good. There we go. And then I'm gonna come up. I'm gonna lift this arm, bringing it gently behind her back. To give her some support, I'm going to lift my knee into place. I'm gonna stack her on top of me right there. You see how this lifted this up? Now I can grab comfortably right there. You could also do this with a pillow if you didn't wanna use your knee, but I had a handy dandy bolster right here to be able to lengthen and pull before we were sliding in here and pushing. Now we're grabbing onto the shoulder blade and pulling gently to access some of these structures. You can still work right into the paraspinal muscles as well. sides so I will come in I will lift the hair out of the way and then slowly right with my forearm slide in see if I can get some lift there we go not too much there Karina Sliding in with my forearm, right at that junction at the upper back. And again, if you didn't want to squat, you could use a chair for this. Just leaning in, moving the shoulder blade around, crossing trapezius, big broad muscle, and then also levator scapula, right at the top of the scapula or shoulder blade there. <sighs> and just like before, we'll lift the arm into position. I'm gonna slowly lift and then slide my knee in. Gives it a little prop there. The thigh is big and broad, so this is comfortable. I have a little more height on this side. I'm gonna actually I'm gonna back out just a little. There we go. But you can already see the length here because of how much her shoulder blade has lifted into place. Again, if you don't like the knee, you can always use a pillow, just to have a pillow stacked underneath. Pulling gently, lengthening the rhomboids along the shoulder blade towards the spine. You can again work into the paraspinals with whatever tool feels good to me at the time.
slowly slide out. Again, right through the paraspinals. We'll come up to the front of the table and again, just walk down the back, mobilizing the shoulder blades as we go. get into the neck, I'm going to pull the hair up and then I'm going to hook right into the sides in the posterior, in the back of the neck, reaching around. As I feel my way, Karina has a little more tension right to the base of the skull. I'm going to hook several fingers right into here and then reinforce just to sink in. Ah, good breathing. All those attachments we talked about of levator scapula, trapezius, other paraspinal muscles, the suboccipitals, right through here, sliding in. one side, then I'm going to switch to the opposite. Again, reinforced fingers, just stacking these fingers on top, kind of pressing into my fingernails. So I don't have to strain my left hand. I'm able to work effortlessly. Just slight isometric muscle engagement. Reaching in with my fingers, we're going to reinforce by pressing into the nails so that I've got these fingers out and I'm just pressing into the nails, so I'm reinforcing those right hand fingers right into the suboccipitals, these muscles right at the base of the skull. I don't like the fingers that way. I can always use a thumb. Feel a little tension right there. So I'm gonna figure out what angle I can stack so that it feels like my thumb has integrity. In other words, I'm not jeopardizing a joint. But I can press in right there. There's a little pressure to the back of Karina's head, but I'm not mashing her into the face rest more pressures in my thumb, right 
through, I believe, what's splenia cervicis, just a muscle along the spine right there. And both sides coming in, moving, trying to see where there's some tension through the neck muscles. Come in and just make a big grab here. Hold on. Not too much pressure. Okay, let me back off just a little bit. I have strong hands because I've done this for a really long time, so it's easy for me to stack my hands just so it would provide too much pressure. Because of her breathing, I, I felt like maybe it was a little too much. When I asked, she said it was just a little heavy, so I backed off just a hair. And I suspect that right there feels good. If you use too much pressure, it's gonna be uncomfortable. Long term, as we go through this video series, we're gonna be showing you self-massage and stretches in addition to what we're doing now. So we're gonna show someone like me how to work on you, and then we're also gonna show you how to work on yourself in future videos. I'm gonna move my fingers just a little lower. Hook end to right there. Just again, again, get this junction between the upper back and the neck. We're covering the muscles from one end to the other. Usually I would work on the lower back first and then work my way up, just seems to be how I do things. But there's nothing wrong with starting with the upper back and neck if people are having particular problems there that you want to address first. Hooking in, oh, right there, especially on this right side where my thumb is. I just feel some tension through the muscles there. Just leaning in. My bones are stacked in a way where I'm not hyper extending my fingers, I'm not hurting them in any way. Just finding a good spot so I can sink in right there. catch your breath moving back into the upper back just like we may have started little kitty making biscuits action back and forth side to side hook on the outside of the shoulder blades right along infraspinatus and slide my way out. We've used this series to work on upper back pain related to the paraspinals, related to this junction between the shoulder blade and the neck, and then also along the rotator cuff through here, which is a more secondary. Uh, response that people have. This section right in here where we use the forearm pressure, tons of people have challenges in here. You're really going to want to focus on that and give people a little bit of compression like we did with the forearm. And we'll see you again soon in our ongoing series on upper back and neck pain. Thank you, Karina. Thank you for watching our video today. You can follow the full length of videos on Amazon. The link is at the top of the description. Be sure to follow us on social media and to subscribe so we can give you more free content. You can find more from me specifically, robertgardnerwellness.com and follow me on social media as well.